we're gonna get started. So let's open a game up with the move d4, and he's rated 2000, so a good player. So he goes d5, let's just continue with the move c4. Go c6, good move. Let's go knight f3. This is what I recommend. And against the Sloth, I recommend you guys to go for the exchange variation. Which might look a little dull at first, but there's a lot of ideas. Knight c3, knight c6, and now we develop our bishop to f4 where it's placed very well on this diagonal. So he goes e6, and the drawback of that move, we discussed this earlier, is that he blocks in our bishop. Now, I wanted to bring on my bishop first, and then play the move e3 to make sure that this is active. He goes a6. Okay, let me activate my um, my bishop to d3. Goes bishop e7. The one thing I have to be a little bit careful of is that he doesn't go knight h5 at a good moment. So I do have to take that into consideration. I can still go here. But I think I'm going to play the move h3 so that after this I can go back to h2. Alright, so let's see what he is going to do here. He goes b5, okay. Let me go ahead and go short castles. Well, this is not a Jubava London. The Jubava London is different because there the knight, you go knight c3 on this move and you put your knight in front of the c-pawn. You do bring out your other bishop, but it is, uh, it is significantly different. And after this game, we might discuss real quick why it is... Uh, Different. Okay, he goes bishop, D, bishop b7. Let me just put my rook on the open file, rook c1. Okay, he goes rook c8, very logical. I could move my knight to e5. Let's see, it's not going to be easy to come up with a plan here. Maybe here. Go a4, but b4. I feel like 95 is probably the way to go. So let's go 95. Okay, he takes. I can take with the D pawn, but then he moves his knight back. So let's go ahead and take with uh, the bishop. Again, I'm sorry to hear that, Sharnock. Okay, he goes bishop D6. Now if I take, he recaptures. Then maybe I can go here and sneak in knight a4. Knight a4 he still is here. So it's not easy at all. What does it take? Let's see what we're going to do here. Okay, if I take, he takes. Thank you, thank you, Andy. Appreciate that. So take, take. Queen b3. I would like to go here, but he has knight d7 to stop me from jumping into this square. Which is quite unfortunate. Can go here right away. Hmm. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and take. He's got a recapture. And let's go queen b3, because I want to move my queen anyway to this side of the board. Maybe afterwards we can double up the rooks. But so far our opponent has been playing really well. And we might potentially have to grind him down in an endgame. Now I would love to do this and this. But again, he goes 97 and just covers it. So I'm just going to go rook c2 followed by rook c1. Hello, Jose. Alright, so let's see what he's going to do. Okay, he goes knight e4. All right, so let's see. I could take with the knight. I could also take with the bishop. I can also just bring in my rook. Because if he takes, I take with the rook. And I do get full control over the c-file. So I think I'm going to do that. And as knight and games pointed out, the main advantage I have in this position is that my bishop is much better than his bishop. Because his pawns are on light squares. So his bishop is really blocked in. My pawns are in dark square, so my light squared bishop can nicely move in between the pawns. So 
so hope that makes sense everyone that's also why he didn't take because then his bishop opens up a little bit he goes f5 and now i feel like he needs to be a little bit careful I, i'm looking at tactics at, on the c file i don't quite see anything i again have the idea of knight a4 because i do want to plan my knight here i could also consider the take first and then go here knight e2 is a move as well stopping this push okay so let's say i take here and here if he takes i no yeah so here i feel like i'm just gonna go knight e2 look c8 though so let's say i take I can take with the d pawn just slightly problematic maybe go here right away Um, I'll go here. I'll just try to keep control over the game. He takes, I cannot take with the... I mean, I can, but he goes here, and the queen sack doesn't work, so I'll just have to take with the rook. We control the only open file on the board, so we're a little bit better. He goes there. Okay, let's go ahead and trade. Let's go queen c2. Again, we control the only open file. Okay, awesome. That's awesome to hear. That's awesome to hear. Okay, he goes there. Now let's go ahead. I'm considering the take. And then knight c1. I think it's good. Let's go ahead and take. Because now he cannot stop my knight from moving to c5. I could have perhaps also kept the bishop on the board. Okay, takes with the f-pawn. Let's go knight c1 and go to, want to go to b3 and c5, where it will have a very nice outpost. Now this is a move I have to... Well, I, I can just go here. Which is also... Yeah, actually I should not have traded, but okay, let's go knight b3. It's alright, I get my knight to c5 and I will have a lot of pressure on his position. Potentially I can maybe open up this side of the board as well. Because usually one weakness is not enough to win the game. That being said, upon a6 will be tough for him to defend once my knight lands here. Hello, David. Good to see you. Okay, so he goes queen c6. So let's calculate, right? Like, let, what happens if they're very straightforward? Take, take. Knight c5. He still has a5, so he's not losing that pawn. What I could do is trade. Trade. Knight a5 to fix the pawn. Bishop d7 and then b4. He could try to go e5. I mean, I do get my knight here. But the question is, is it going to be enough to win? I could also play this position with the queens on the board. So I think I'll just go knight c5 and keep the queens on the board because I'm not 100% sure that I win. And the queens on the board, I should always have very good chances. Because again, the pawns are very weak. He goes h6. Okay, now I could go here and here, which looks really tempting, and then enter the position through this square. So let's, let's go ahead and go queen d2. He goes bishop c8, which is a good move. Um, actually, let me go ahead and go f3. I should have done it on the last move already. Let's go f3. If he takes a good queen f2. And then I also start creating threats against this king. The position opens up a little bit, which should be in my favor. Because it will be tough for him to hang on to all the weaknesses. He goes g6. But now after the trade opponent, e4 becomes incredibly weak. So let's give a check. And let's go queen f4. This becomes weak. Queen e5. And again, look at his pieces. They are completely stuck. So even though he didn't lose any material or anything like that in the very beginning of the game, he did make some serious weaknesses. Okay, queen e5. Now we can give a check and win the bishop. And with that, the game. 
Okay, he goes king up. We take the bishop, of course. All right, so thanks, Ayo Joe, for the game. Appreciate it. All right, so let's have a quick look at this game. All right, so we played d4. He responded with the Slav defense. And we played the exchange Slav. This is how I would recommend how you guys play against the Slav. Because it's very easy to play, and it also... It has some venom to it. He played the move e6, e3. But his main problem for the rest of the game was really this bishop on c8. And black needs to really know how to deal with this. Okay, so, right, yeah, a6, bishop d3, bishop b7. So I played h3 to make sure that he does not, uh, can tr he cannot try my bishop. Maybe knight e5 was a little bit more accurate, but h3 is perfectly good as well. He goes b5, which weakens this square in particular a little bit. Okay, castle here. Apparently I should have gone a4 here, which is quite instructive. If he goes b4, I go knight b1. He castles, I go knight bd2. And I want to go queen e2 to target this pawn. Maybe knight b3. It's a rook c1 and knight c5. Okay, very, very, very interesting. So rook c1, even though it looks very logical, is maybe a slight mistake. It's here. Okay, go knight e5. Again, maybe a4 was better. With the idea of knight back and then knight to b3 and queen e2. But okay, go here. Trade, trade. I think he should have just castled here. I think bishop d6 is a mistake. Because again, at, at the end, the dark squares become very weak. Again, apparently a4 is the best move. Not easy to figure out. I just took queen b3, e castled, and rook c2. So I just want to double up on the c file. He goes here, rook fc1, good move. He goes f5. But again, this weakens the dark squares even further. Knight e2, he takes, takes. And so even though we get into this endgame where the material is equal... I will have a very nice outpost on c5, maybe e5. And his bishop will always be his bishop will always be passive, staring at its own pawns. So I go queen c2, attacking the bishop. Here, now I trade off my bishop for his knight. And then I go knight c1. Because his knight is the only piece left that can control the dark squares. So now if I put a knight here, he can never challenge it. And so we get a position where we have a good knight versus a bad bishop. He goes here, knight b3, my knight is headed to this outpost. And some of you guys might be wondering, what is an outpost? An outpost is a square that is in your opponent's position. So by definition, it's on the fifth rank or higher, or if you're black, on the fourth rank or higher, which cannot be controlled by one of your opponent's pawns. So he cannot play b6 or d6 because he already has the pawns on b5 and d5. And it is supported by a pawn, so in this case the d-pawn. Alright, so I hope that makes sense to everyone. So he goes here, knight c5, and h6. And here we get the concept of two weaknesses. Because one weakness, this pawn over here, is not enough to win. Alright, so first we try to bring in our queen. But now to move f3 to try to open up this side of the board as well. Because then we just get too many threats. He should have taken, I would have played queen f2. And I'm better, but he has chances to hold. But after g6, I take the pawn on e4 becomes weak. His king becomes very exposed. And I give a check in here. And yeah, he's already losing a pawn. He's also facing an attack. Anyone here? And unfortunately for him, this just blundered a bishop. And we won the game. All right, so I hope that made sense, everyone. And again, this is why I would recommend to you guys to play the exchange variation against the Slav. All right.